Okay, for today's video, we're going to look at removing false positives. Sometimes when it comes around, it can see more than one black line. So if we're coming down here, watching the robot going along, as long as he hits the corner, he starts to turn around the corner, he starts to turn around the corner, starts to turn around the corner. As he comes up here, he sees the other black line there, and he has two black lines in the vision there, and he starts to follow the wrong black line. Okay, I've just made the slightest modification to the code. I've just added this one line in that um, after it looks for the contours, if it's found any, it's now going to draw all of them in. When I put negative one here, it means all of them, and I'm going to draw them in in green, three pixels thick. So I'm going to draw all the contours in. Now, as we can see down here, there's contours up the top side as well as down the bottom, and it's seeing two sets of contours. So at the moment, when we look at our code here, what we do is, if we do find any contours, we just make our box equal to the very first one. And if the very first one happens to be the correct one, that's quite fine. But if there's more than one, and the first one isn't the correct one, that will be a problem for us as it is at the moment. So we're going to learn now, if there's more than one, how we can work out which is the correct one we want and reject the others. Okay, I'm going to make it even more interesting. I've put a couple of bits of black tape up there as red herrings where the robot really has to reject those. Now it's going to know which is the correct one because the correct one is the one that's going to go to the bottom of the screen. So as it comes along, it starts to drive around the corner, starts to follow the contours, follow the contours, follow the contours. At this point, the black line it should follow is the one that goes to the very bottom of the screen because that's the correct one. Any of these contours here that aren't going to the bottom of the screen aren't the correct one. So we need a routine that works out which contour goes furthest down the screen. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to find the four corners of each contour and out of those four corners, we're going to find which corner is the lowest corner of each contour. Then we're going to get through all those contours and whichever one's the lowest is the one we're going to keep. So first of all, what I've just done here with the code is I have just added a few lines here. After we find all, all the contours, if there's one, at the moment we're just saying black box equals the very first contour for the moment. So we haven't started searching through it, we're just doing one contour. I say that box is equal to box points of black box. So that routine will return the four corners into the array box. Then I just simply loop through that array, picking off the X and Y coordinates out of each one of those and drawing a circle in purple. And that's what you saw before. Okay, so what I've done now is I've changed the code a little bit. Instead of drawing all the corners, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw the first two corners. The very first corner here, I'm going to draw in colour pink. And the very second corner, I'm going to draw in colour red. Right. So when we come down here, as you look at on the computer, what you'll find is the pink one is always whichever one's the lowest. So as soon as he goes around there, he's always the lowest one down the screen. No matter which way I turn this around and what rotation I do, you'll find the very first corner it picks off is always the lowest corner. And then it rotates in a clockwise direction. So the next corner is always the one that's around next. So the corner we want to always look for is the very first corner is always going to be the lowest corner. Now, because I'll be using it so often, I've made a variable called contours blank black length, which is just the amount of contours I've found. We simply say, if we've found some, i.e. it's more than zero, then we'll come down into here. We'll say, if we've only found one, we just do exactly what we're doing before. Black box is just equal to the first one because there is only one. Else, i.e. there's more than one, I'm gonna make a blank array called candidates. I'm going to make a loop that loops through every single contour. And as it goes through each contour, the black box will be equal to it. 
I'm going to get the court, the box, the corner coordinates of it. I'm going to get the x and y of the very first corner because we know the first corner is always the lowest one. And then my candid, my candidates array, I'm going to append with that y coordinate and also which contour number it is. Then I can sort that candidate from lowest to highest. So i.e. The very last one of the candidate now will be the candidate that has the y highest y coordinate. Then I'll just pick off obviously my highest y coordinate and my contour number by getting the very last one. And the last one will be the length of the contours minus one because it starts counting from zero. Then of course black box will just be equal to that particular contour. So when I see that in action, see so it comes along here. And he's driving along, and up there we've got to go through that. Driving along, driving along, driving along. Come up, I go through the corner here, and I have all these red herrings. The bottom line is, it will stay... Oop, that one got into the bit there. Even if I come across here and I can see multiple contours, it will stay with the contour that goes to the very bottom of the screen. Of course, this becomes problematic when we start going up a little bit further and multiple contours start going to the bottom of the screen, then it doesn't know which one to, um, to stay with. And that's what we're going to cover next. Okay, looking at this problem, we know as we go along, the best contour to follow when we start getting multiple contours is the contour that goes all the way to the bottom of the screen, because that's obviously the road that you've been following. But what happens is once we come up here a little bit further and we start getting multiple contours that go to the bottom of the screen, we don't know which one to follow. It's quite difficult to work out which is a good rule that will always mean you follow the right contour. When you strike this problem in computer vision, one rule you can always fall back on is that if you are processing the image at a high frame rate, it means between images the correct contour is probably very close to being in the same position or are very close to the same position. So when I'm down here, I'm following the contour that comes to the bottom of the screen. Once I come up into here a little bit and I get multiple contours, I will choose the contour out of those three contours that are coming to the bottom of the screen. I'll choose the contour that's in the closest position to where the correct contour was last time. And that means I'll stay on that. So I can start down here. I can follow along the road, come up to the corner, turn around the corner, follow around the corner, Come up through here, follow them around that corner, and on I go by following those two rules. All right, let's see if we can get our head around this code a little bit. Basically, what we're going to do is where if we have multiple contours going off the bottom of the page, we're going to compare the x and y coordinates of all those contours to the x and y coordinate of from the previous frame of the successful contour. Now, the very first time we go down through the loop, it won't have an X and Y from the previous one. So right at the, right at the top before we start looping, I'll make up a fake one where I just give my X and Y coordinates of my last frame to be the center of my screen, just as a fake one. All right? And then what happens again, this is where it does all the processing. Once it's done all the processing and it's found the correct frame, uh, the correct contour, this here is down here is where we... Um, process the contour and work out the angle and the position and blah 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 when we have the correct contour and we're going to process it what we'll do is we'll make x last equals to the x position of that contour and y last equal to the y position of that contour so when it goes off the bottom and it comes back up the top to loop around it now has the x and y position from the very last one here's our loop up there so we come down there we find our contours that's the length of our contours, so i.e. how many contours we have. If we have more than zero, i.e. we have some contours. If there's only one contour, we just pick off that one because there's only one. Else, we come down here, and this here was where we loop through all the contours. We look for um, the very the corners of it. Um, we get what we're going to say now, and then we're going to get the very bottom, the y coordinate, the very bottom corner. We're going to say if that y coordinate is over 358, 
I'm going to increase my off bottom counter by one. So I chose 358 because the height of my screen is 360 pixels. So that's from uh, pixel zero to pixel 359. So anything that's over 358 is either at the very bottom of the screen or off the bottom of the screen. So I have a counter every time one of those contours goes off the bottom of the screen, my off bottom counter will go up. And the same thing, I just sort my candidates there. Oh, sorry, add it all to my candidates. When I'm adding it to my can candidates, I add the Y coordinate of the very bottom corner, the corresponding um, contour number, and I also add the X position and the Y position of the center of that box. Then I sort the candidate, and I say here, and before I was just picking off the very, la the very first one, Oh, sorry, the very last one, because they're sorted in order, the very last one would be um, the one that's going off the bottom of the screen. What I'm saying is now, instead of just picking off the very last one, I'm going to say if there's more than one, so if off bottom counter is larger than one, obviously more than one's gone off the bottom, I make another blank variable called can that's off the bottom. I will cycle through all the can that's off the bottom which will be the last number of candidates for whatever size off the bottom is. So I have the contour length, so I start at the contour length minus off bottom and cycle through to the contour length. So that will be a loop that will just cycle through the last number of contours equal to the number that have gone off the bottom. I'll pick off the Y position, their contour number, their X position, their Y position then I'm going to work out the distance between their X and Y and the last X and Y. I'll do that by Pythagoras triangle rule. The straight line distance between those two coordinates will be, will form a triangle. You go out by your X and then up by your Y. And then you want a straight line between the two, forms a right angle triangle. The straight line between the two via Pythagoras rule will be the square root of the sum of the square of each side. So to work out the square of each side, we need to get the absolute value of the x position minus the x position of the new contour minus the x position of the last contour. So that will give us the distance between the two. And then I square it. So that's Python for power two star star. So to the power of two plus the absolute value of the y position minus the y position of the last one to the power of 2. And I've got it all in brackets. I need to find the square root. If I do it to the power of 0.5, that will give us the square root. So this variable total distance will store the distance between that variable and the last successful candidate. And I'll store that in here. So I'll store the total distance and the corresponding contour number with it. I can then sort that. And once I sort that, it means the one with the shortest distance will be at the top, the very first one. So when I come down here and I pick them off, if I pick off the very, very first one, which is position zero, it will be the one that's closest. And I can just make black box equal to that. Else, I do what I was doing before, where I just you know pick the one that goes off the bottom. Right, and that's how she works. Um, I will put all this code um, up on GitHub and a link to the code on GitHub in the description on the YouTube video. Right, she's getting a little bit more complex, but if you download the code and look through the code, it'll start to become a little bit more obvious, and it's not that long. That's the whole program there from start to finish. But yeah, it does get your head around it a bit.